Here to move that the House take note of miscellaneous business, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, meanwhile back in the real world, Mr Speaker, the economy is growing 2.5% larger than it was this time last year, a net 57,000 more jobs in the New Zealand economy than a year, two years ago, Mr Speaker. Household saving is positive for the first time in more than a decade, and total goods and services exports have increased dramatically, Mr Speaker, over the last couple of years, and all without getting the printing presses out and trying to print money, Mr Speaker, like the desperate approach that Mr Peters, who incidentally never came up with it all the time, he's been in various governments over the 20-odd thousand years he's been in Parliament. <laughs> Nobody has come up with it before, but today it's the solution, Mr Speaker. The New Zealand economy is actually doing pretty well compared to most parts of the developed world, not as well as we'd like, and there are upsides, Mr Speaker, and there are downsides, and there are some people that are doing well and some people are struggling. We understand that because of the GFC and what's been happening around the world and what's been happening in our own country in terms of the Christchurch earthquakes. And this week, Mr Speaker, it was a tough week down the West Coast with the news that the Spring Creek mine is losing money and is uneconomic to keep open at current coal prices. That is very difficult, Mr Speaker. But, Mr Speaker, there could be an upside. Just up the coast, there is another mining project which is ready to go, which is economic at current mining price, at coal prices, Mr Speaker. There are private investors who want to invest in a new mine up the coast on the Deniston Plateau, Mr Speaker. They have consents, but they also have appeals against those consents, Mr Speaker. Roughly the same number of jobs could be created at this new project that are being lost in the uneconomic underground mine, Mr Speaker, in Spring Creek. That's the opportunity. So yesterday, Mr Speaker, I called on the objectors to just once, just once, in a special case, to withdraw their objections to allow this mine to go ahead, Mr Speaker, to withdraw their objections. And to assist, I suggested that the Labor Party, supposedly in favour of jobs, and the Green Party, supposedly in favour of jobs and wants to have a select committee hearing in manufacturing, which is of course include coal, supposedly in favour of jobs, and the EPMU to join me in that call, Mr Speaker. And there has been a deafening silence, Mr Speaker. The EPMU popped their head up and said, oh, actually, we support we support the Bathurst mining application, Mr Speaker. They popped their heads up. I went back to them and said, does that mean you support my call for the objections to be withdrawn? And there was a deafening silence from the EPMU, Mr Speaker. They were not on the side of making a call to have those objections. Where was the local MP, Mr Speaker? Where was one Damien O'Connor? Damien O'Connor was nowhere. I asked no sign of any comment from Damien O'Connor about the importance of withdrawing these appeals and getting these jobs going on the coast, Mr Speaker. And what about the leadership of the Labor Party, who were on the steps of Parliament yesterday, on the steps of Parliament, talking to the miners, but have been deafening in their silence on calling for the appeals to be withdrawn, Mr Speaker. They have not done it, Mr Speaker. And then there's the Greens. The Greens, Mr Speaker, who cry crocodile tears about manufacturing jobs in this country. And where was Mr Hague and his colleagues when I suggested they talk to their mates in the environmental movement and suggest the appeals be withdrawn? They were absolutely nowhere. Their silence is deafening, Mr Speaker. It is absolutely appalling that on the one hand they say, I've got an interest, Mr Speaker, in jobs, but on the other hand, I'll keep really quiet, really quiet, when it comes to actually support. And then Annie King is absolutely no interest in it, Mr Speaker. So, it's a very straightforward exercise. I would welcome the support of the Green Party and the Labor Party, the local MP, alongside the National Party. Order, I apologise to the Minister. I will make sure he gets time. Now, this level of interjection is totally unacceptable. I mean, a robust debate is good, but this is over the top, and some of the most recent interjections from both sides of the House have been totally irrelevant, as far as I can make out. And I, uh, and I just ask the House to settle down a little bit so that the public can hear the Minister. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. The, 
Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. I, I think you'd hardly rule that way when the Minister is complaining about silence from the Labour Party. He invited order. a response. Order. I accept that a level of robustness is in order, but the member, his own level of interjection was, was quite unreasonable. And uh, the member has quite an effective voice when it comes to volume on, uh, on interjections. And, and the level, and the level is, is just too, too much. And, and I ask the House just to come back to a little bit of order and I'll make sure the Minister still has his remaining uh, 35 seconds thereabouts. Honourable Stephen. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I'd welcome the member taking a call and saying he too calls on the appellants to withdraw their objections to the Bathurst mine. And if he's prepared to do that, I would welcome that, Mr Speaker, and that would be fantastic. But basically at the moment, the Labor Party, the Greens, the EPMU and of course the environment is all very, very quiet about viable jobs on the West Coast, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, this government is focused on building competitive opportunities for companies to grow and once again we learned this week that the opposition isn't. Kevin Hay. Thank you, Mr.